What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here moving on to the next video. I'm now going to do an example. So you are trying to estimate the mean grade for a university course where the population standard deviation is 15%. From a sample of 16 students, you find the sample mean and standard deviation to be 78% and 10% respectively. And we have to find a 95% confidence interval. Now, this question here, I'm going to show you how to do in two different ways. I'm going to do it in a manual way, so we're going to have to use the table. And then I'm going to show you at the end how to do it with the calculator. And I feel showing you manually first is going to make the calculator portion a lot easier to understand. So the tables that I'm going to be using, I'll leave a link in the description box to them. And I'll also leave a link in the description box for the stats calculator that I'm particularly using. It's a certain Casio model. So when I get a question like this, first thing I like to personally do is write out all of the information, all of the parameters I'm given. So notice we're given the population standard deviation that is 15%. From a sample of 16 students, so notice our sample size that we're working with, which is n, is 16. The sample mean and the sample standard deviation is 78% and 10% respectively. So if you remember, x bar represents the sample mean, so that is 78%. And then s bar represents the uh, sample standard deviation, which is 10%. So notice in this case, we're given both the population standard deviation and the sample standard deviation. And actually one more variable that I want to introduce in this video, we haven't covered it yet, is this alpha. You're going to start seeing this alpha come up in this chapter and not just this chapter, but for the rest of the stats course. And uh, I'm going to quickly explain what this is, how it relates to confidence intervals. So it's like a mini lecture within the question. Basically this alpha here, it's 100% minus the confidence percentage. That's what it is when you are talking about confidence intervals. And you're going to see this alpha is actually going to be more important when we're dealing with hypothesis testing. We're going to go into more detail about what it is. It's called significance in that chapter. But for now, with confidence intervals, I just want you to remember that the alpha is 100% minus the confidence percentage. So it's basically 100%. And in this case, the confidence percentage is 95, which is 5%. And if you're dealing with decimals, then it would be 1 minus the confidence percentage in decimals. So it'd be 1 minus 0.95, which would give you 0 0.05. But let's keep everything in percents right now. So the alpha in this case is 5%. And you don't, it's not too important in this chapter to know the definition of it. Why I want to introduce it is because it's going to be used as notation a lot throughout the chapter. But basically this alpha, if you think about it, 95% in this question, we want to get an interval where we're 95% confident that the population mean is going to fall within that range. So this alpha here, this 5% is like the probability that the population mean is going to fall outside of that range. So you could almost think about it like a probability of making an error that the population mean is falling outside of our range for that estimate. Right? So the more you increase this, the lower that the alpha is going to be. Now, why this is important in this chapter is because you're going to start seeing stuff like this, like Z subscript alpha or T subscript alpha. So, for example, if you see something like Z subscript 0.05, Right, so the alpha is 0 0.05 or 5%. Basically, what this is, is the Z score. So let's put Z subscript 0 0.05, where the probability to the right of that Z score is 0 0.05 or 5%. Right, so usually we've been talking about when we're using the table, we get uh, the area to the right 
or uh, sorry, to the left of a certain Z score. But this here, when you see something like this, this is basically the probability to the right of a certain Z score, right? So it's a little bit different. And if you wanted to get this, you would look up in the table this probability here, which would be 95%, right? And so that Z score would be 1.645. Hopefully you're pretty comfortable in getting that at this point. And then same thing for the T distributions. So that's what it means. That's basically why this alpha is important in this specific chapter. Again, we're going to go into more detail about what it intuitively means um, in hypothesis testing. So just keep this in mind here when we are discussing the rest of this example. Now, what are we asked to do in this question? We're asked to find a 95% confidence interval. And if you remember from videos before, confidence interval, this is the general format here. It's basically the sample mean plus or minus the margin of error. And now we're going to start getting more technical with this formula here. So sample mean, let's keep everything in notation for now. Sample mean, we know the notation is X bar. And then we're going to have plus or minus. Now, the margin of error when the population standard deviation is known, right, which it is in this case, it's basically this. It's the Z score at subscript alpha over 2. And I'm going to explain why it's alpha over 2 times the um, population standard deviation, which is given, it's known, all over the square root of n. And so we can fill out some of this stuff now. So the sample mean, we know it's 78% in this question, plus or minus this z alpha over 2. I'm going to just leave that for now. And then the population standard deviation, 15%. And this is all over the square root of the sample size, which is 16. So this would be the square root of 16. So remember, this formula here, very critical to know, it's when the population standard deviation is known. When it's unknown, this formula is going to be different and we will go over that in the next video. Now, this Z subscript alpha over two, why alpha over two? Well, as we mentioned, the alpha in this case is 5%. Let's actually put it in decimals, 0 0.05. So we know the alpha, it's 5%. So what's alpha over two? Alpha over two is gonna be 5% divided by two, which is two and a half percent, or 0 0.05 divided by two, which is 0 0.025. So this here is basically Z subscript 0 0.025. Now, why 0 0.025? Well, it's because when we're dealing with a confidence interval, here's how I like to think about it. The confidence interval is going to be based, it's going to be centered in a distribution. So if we're looking for a 95% confidence interval, then the interval is going to be here. It's going to be between these two values here. And so this percentage in this question is 95%, right? It's like a centered area in the distribution. And so notice what is remaining. What's remaining is 5%. But notice that there are two regions that we have to split that 5% in between. And because this is perfectly symmetrical, then we know this is going to be 2.5% and this is going to be 2.5%. And so basically what we're looking for here is that Z score where the probability to the right is 0.025. And that's why we get that 0 0.025 here. So that alpha over 2, it basically takes into account having that centered area, right? Whatever that area is in your specific question. So if this was a 90% confidence interval, then this would be 5 and 5, right? 10% would be remaining split up 
between the two, uh, two outer regions. Or if this was a 99% confidence interval, then this would be 0.5%. And this would be 0.5% because it would be 1% remaining split up between the two regions. And 0.5% in decimals is 0 0.005. But in this case, 95% confidence interval, 2.5, 2.5. So that's where that Z score at 0 0.025 is coming from. That's why that alpha over 2 is there. And also remember, because this population standard deviation is known, this whole time we're talking about a normal distribution, not a T distribution like I'm going to do in the next example. That's why you have this Z over here. So we're looking for Z scores on just a standard normal distribution. So to get this, you can look it up in the table. If you look it up in the table, you're looking for the area to the left of that Z score. Now the area to the left of this, there's a lot going on here. So let me just maybe make another one. We got Z subscript 0 0.025. So that means this here is two and a half percent. So when you look it up in the table, what you're gonna be looking up is the area to the left, which would be 97.5 percent. Right, so just be aware of that. And when you do that, you would end up getting 1.96. And you can actually get this 1.96 with the calculator as well, if you don't want to use a table. So if you go to the calculator, go to the main menu, you hit stat, then you hit F5, right? So this F5 here is basically a distribution button. And then you would hit F1 because we would be working with the normal distribution. And then you'd hit F3 because we're looking for a Z score, you would be inversing the normal. And then you would come up to this input screen. The data you would put as variable. And then the tail here, notice how you can have left, right, or centered. And if you want to get these two values, these two Z scores here, you can actually put this as central. There's actually multiple uh, ways you could do this. So I'm going to show you the first way. So central here, and then the area would be 0 0.95 because that central area in this specific question we're working with is 95%. And since we're working with a standard normal di uh, distribution, standard deviation is one, the, uh, the mean is zero. And then when you execute this, you would get plus or minus 1.96. So those are these two Z scores, right? Where between those two Z scores, that centered area of 95% is there. Another way you could do this is you can look for the uh, left tail. So doing it this way, and the left tail would be 0.975. And that would just give you that single Z score of 1.96. And then because this is symmetrical, you know this is gonna be negative 1.96. So that is another way to do it. So you could get these Z scores with the calculator as well. And then finally, when you do this calculation, this part, the margin of error, it's gonna be 7.35. And so you plus or minus that from that sample mean of 78. And so you end up getting 70.65 to 85.35. I kept it to two decimal places. So that there is the answer. That's the 95% confidence interval. So basically what this means is that you can be 95% confident that the mean grade for all students taking this course is in between uh, 70.65% and 85.35% if you want to make a concluding statement. Right, so this is how you do it manually. And then finally, if you want to do it with a stats calculator, this is how you do it. These are the stream of inputs. So you go stat, you go F4, which you'll see as interval. And then you hit F1, because we're going to be using the Z distribution because the population standard deviation is known. 
and then F1 again because we are dealing with just one sample. And you get to this input screen here. So you have data. Data is variable. Basically, you input this here when the sample information is already given to you. You're going to see in future questions, we're going to be doing videos on this as well, where instead of the sample information being given to you, you're going to get a list of the observations in the sample. And you're going to have to find the sample mean yourself, the sample standard deviation yourself. And then this data here would be list instead. You could input a list in the calculator. But we'll do that in future videos. But if you're given the sample information, you put variable here. Now this confidence level, it's basically the confidence percentage. So this would be 0.95. Um, this is the population standard deviation, which was what, 15? The sample mean, which is 78, and then the sample size is 60. And when you execute that, you should get something very close to this, right? I rounded this to two decimal places, so you should get 70.65 to 85.35. It's going to be maybe four or five decimal places, but nevertheless, same thing, right? So two different ways, manually and then with a calculator. And then notice that all of these inputs in the calculator they correspond with the inputs over here, right? The sample mean, which is here. And then this Z score gets taken care of in the calculator in the background because you specify the confidence level, which is going to affect the Z score. And you specified that you're doing a Z test, right? So this Z score gets uh, taken care of with these two inputs here. And then the population standard deviation, 15, and then the end value is 60, right? So same kind of inputs manually and then with the calculator. And then very last thing I want to mention about this question is notice that this sample standard deviation, it wasn't used at all, right? That S bar that we wrote down initially. So when you get a question, where the population standard deviation is known. Sometimes they will give you the sample standard deviation, sometimes they won't. In either case, you're not using it anyways. But you will be using the sample standard deviation when that population standard deviation is unknown. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video.